He said there was a long thing to go through, we've got I know, different. Exactly. I know, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you doing here now? Well, um, well I've, I've got some holes to drill on this C-section reinforcing plate here. Yeah. Um, to, to, to finish it off. Yeah. Uh, then I'm going to manufacture the third section of skin which actually comes back to this rib here. So it'll be going there all the way down to beat up with this here. Yeah. So it'll be a joint overlap just there. Yeah. Uh, and that is really the door uh, structure completed then. Oh, that's good. And uh, Dave was saying at the moment they're going to put the rivets in and then paint it up afterwards. Yeah, that, that's right. The What's this? A cardboard template? Exactly. This template here. Yeah. I've added a bit of overlap. That's the rivet line there. It's added another inch there. Yeah. In actual fact, when I when end up finishing it, it'll probably only come, it'll be half an inch shorter, but yeah. this gives me a good indication of... Um, yeah. The web and the two booms of the rear spar of the French wing NX664 are now painted and are waiting for assembly. All stiffeners on the web riveted into position. So the bottom spar and you've virtually got the two booms fitted. They are fitted. Yeah, we'll just put just put in the last um, holes in because when we lowered it down onto the jig, the holes in the jig didn't align. So we're up around is because the bottom of the wing when we got it had been slightly crushed. Yes. I don't know what we're written is where it had been crushed through the bottom, it had done that to the wing. Oh. So of course all the holes were drilled off when it was fully assembled. Yeah. Now it's been thinking and it's all in the relaxed position. It's oh, yes. gone back to where it should be. Yeah. And of course all the holes didn't line up. So we've had to redrill the holes for yeah. now. Yeah. But when we uh, when we do the proper airworthy ones, we'll get some new plates. Yeah. And we've decided that instead of putting the wing in the jig to strip it. It's going to be stripped out of the jig and then only use the jig to really? assemble. Because yeah. uh, I think the French right hand wing was actually bent. <laughs> yeah, where it touched, where it collapsed, the gear collapsed and it went down on the wing, it's actually bent the wing, the, the sparse. Yeah. So you can't reuse that as a datum sort no, of thing no. for lining the jig up, can you? No, so the, the, what we have to do is exactly the same, strip it all down to nothing. Yeah. Then examine it all or whatever and when we when we get the airworthy ones we'll have all new spars anyway yeah and then the uh, everything will be built up and then built onto the jig yeah and then built up from there so not everything will be relaxed and tight and not twisted and tight that's right yeah yeah so when will you get this in the jig then or is well hopefully next week it'll be clocked into it properly yeah we still can't think because it's one of them See the sole plates that we've had. Oh, yeah. That's one of the originals, that's okay. But the one with this side was completely rotted away. So we've got to have a new yeah. ones of those yeah. made. Will you press these bolts in before you put it in the jig? Because didn't you have to use that? Oh yeah, they'll they, they have to be pressed in before you put the um before you put the M rib on, yeah. Yeah. But you could start to put it in the jig and press them on. 
Oh yeah, it'll be, in the, it'll be in the jig before those bolts are pressed in. Yeah. So well, I think uh, we've got to have one of them, a new one for one of them made anyway. Yeah. But it's, it's progressing, as yeah. it says. You know when you come to put a torque wrench on these nuts, on the bolt, nuts and bolts, did you find any mud stretch? You know, could you feel it or did they click they straight away? Talked. Oh, and then, oh. No, no, they haven't oh. been talked yet. All yeah. they've been done is done and snugged up. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know whether they are talked. I wouldn't think back then they would be talked. They'd be done tight. Yeah. And then as they're tightened up, and then they've, they've both got, and you see them, they've all got stop peening on them. Yes. Yeah. Where's stop the knots them. coming off, yeah. Yeah. We've got, John's concentrating on the, um, the ribs now. Rib 22, yeah. because that's got to come out, that's got to be rebuilt. We've decided that all this is going as part of the jig. Is what? Going? Yeah. Don't need it. Don't need it. No? No. no. So what are you going to put in this place? Nothing. What we've got to do is, because John's got a photograph of the original and the bill them. Yeah. And there's nothing over the top of it. Now, it's held this end, and then it's held that end. So what we're going to do is modify the jig to make a, an end plate that goes on rig five. Yeah. So when it's all set up, that plate will slot in and bolt to it, and then it will be bolted up. It's just to stop the uh, washout. You're getting any washout in the wind. Yeah. That's what causes it. Yeah. As long as it's straight parallel and then you've got no washout in it mm. because if, you, if you've got a slight washout which, which, which is a twist so it's, yeah when you get in the, air, the aircraft in the air it will automatically roll to whatever way the washout is yeah and that could cause it if you use this type of jig then could it and well it's no the, the main thing because when you look at the, the, the photographs John's got yeah. The wings built up, there's no skins on it except for the leading edge skins. Yeah. All the leading edge skins are all fitted. They're all fitted, oh are they? Yeah. So what we read here is they build the front spar up like we've built this. Yeah. Then they put all the ribs on. The the leading edge ribs, you Yeah, mean? leading yeah. edge ribs. And yeah. then they put the skins on because yeah. all the skins on the top surface are all solid riveted. Yes. Yeah. So and there's only kind of that sort of gap. Yeah. And a lot of the rivets you wouldn't be able to get to. No. If it was installed. Yeah. On the wing. So yeah. and they assemble it, rivet it all up, all those skins up. Yeah. And then once all the ribs and everything are all in place and the stringers are on, yeah. they lift it as a complete unit and dunk straight on. Because <coughs> if you had the the rib, uh, the front spar up there would have to kind of suspend it somehow because you can't get the ribs in with the spar in position. No, no. Because of all the bracketry and everything that holds them there. Yeah. So that's the only way. You, you put it in and then you lower it down and then fit the brackets and bolt it up. That's it. It's all modular. Yeah. How yeah. it's made. As long as you've got two datums, one end and this end. That's it. Yeah. That's, That's the main thing. Yeah. Because all your datums are there because of all these brackets. Yeah. And they're all bolted in. So yeah. the ribs just come as a complete unit. Yeah. It's yeah. not like other bits where you've got a floppy rib. It's, yeah. a, it's a solid unit. Yeah. And you just put it in, bolt it up. Yeah. Provided this is flat, horizontal, <laughs> and. Um, yeah. No twist in it and whatever. No, yeah. it's been, everything should line up all the way along. Yeah. And right. then you just drop the front spar yeah. on. Yeah. Would that make it easier for you to put in the plug rivets? Yeah, well, I can do the, the do the top spark yeah. one side. Yeah. While it's there. Yeah. The plug rivets are only are they on both sides of the top and bottom of. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're going to use them again, are you? Not changing to screws. As far as I know. Building it as it is. It'll be plug rivets again. Rivets, are they designed to take a load vertical or horizontal, like a shear load or a
pressure tension load. You get what I mean. Well, it depends. Well, it depends where it is. Normally, they're um, it's a tensional load. You find a lot of places if you've got a, a very high shear load there, they need to be bolts. Yeah. I just imagine in this age, or they're what they they use. Like cooked rivets, yeah. So you cook them down because when they cure, they go extremely hard, like a bubble. Yeah, yeah. The aluminium is extremely hard. Oh, yeah. yeah. For a sheer load, that sort of. Yeah. All interesting stuff. Thank you. Yeah. They're designed to take loads both ways, you know. Yeah. Main, mainly, it's a it's a sheer load on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Anywhere that's got high kind of tension and shear on it, you know, yeah. a special river in that horrible. Alright, thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks, Guy, that was yeah, good. That's alright.